What's going on there folks? It is Earthmaster here on the live stream with a, a quick update video on an earthquake, a 5.9 earthquake striking out, well, way down there at the end of the globe. Uh, by the way, it is a smoky day here in Northern California. August 6, 2021 is at 8, about 12.55 p.m. West Coast time and we got a pretty close 6.0 magnitude quake striking down here in the area of the Antarctic uh, South, uh, South America region up here. I'll go ahead and check this out on a little bit different uh, model map real quick and you can see the red circle indicating that 5.9 earthquake out there around the uh and the south sandwich islands it's been a while since we've seen a little bit of earthquake movement out here i know uh uh what a couple months ago three i think it was like about three months ago we had a pretty significant uh, swarm of moderate quakes within this region i don't believe we've seen anything within the past um seven days down here maybe well maybe a little one up here looks like it's been uh uh, what do we got? 4.9 a couple days ago. But other than that, relatively within this region and these ridges right here, it's been relatively quiet. Uh, looks like that may be changing. Uh, there was a deeper movement with that two point with the. Uh, uh, actually, yeah, this one here is the deeper one. South Sandwich Islands, 5.9, 34 kilometers for this earthquake. So that uh, prior quake, 4.9 a couple days ago, was the much shallower one. So a little bit of deeper movement down into the ridges here, or under the ridges, I should say. And looking at, uh, let's go ahead and cover a little bit of movement around the globe. Looking at, well, the flat scale globe. Shows a little bit of movement over here around the Taiwan area once again. Japan remains quiet for now. Um, we did see that cluster of quakes. I'll go ahead and pop that up here on the map again. We've seen that cluster of quakes temporarily relieve, I think, folks. Uh, there was quite a quite a bit of movement. The largest was 5.8, but we've seen lots of 4s, lots of 5s. Uh, nothing above that 5.8 threshold. And I think that little bit of movement right there is sufficient to uh, relieve this area for a little bit, for temporarily. Um, but uh, I was still kind of watching this region here for something much, much larger. Uh, just due to the lack of activity over the past few months within this region of the, of the uh, Japan Trench. But uh, after seeing all of this activity, there was at least at least 19 earthquakes, and these are just a 4.0 and above from the USGS. Uh, there was m much, much more. Much, much more. If anything, I think this is 4.5 and above. Yes, it is 4.5. And that's not going to... Let's see if it's going to include anything smaller here. Okay, these... Uh, 2.5 this will only cover 4.0 and above you, um, as far as inter internationally goes so we're looking at about 24 earthquakes or so and there was like I said there was way more probably underneath the uh, 4.0 threshold but I think we're temporarily relieved in this area for right now folks but uh, um, for how long we'll see movement continuing over here around the Taiwan area quite a few fives kicking off some deep ones 32 kilometers for that 4.9 a little further south uh, and north of the uh, Philippines area Taiwan sits up here where these five pointers kicked off uh, looking down here to the south some further movement south of the Philippines around the uh, Philippine Trench some movement there a very deep earthquake five or a 4.9 at 590 590 kilometers below surface that's some significant deep movement. Of course, all along uh, this this area here, the Pacific Ring of Fire and also inland uh, towards the Taiwan region, all deep. Uh, they normally see quite a bit of deep movement along that uh, area. Indonesia area and the Andaman Sea looking uh, pretty active as well. We've seen a little uptick and increase and uh, a little bit of earthquake activity up here in this region. Within the last 24 hours, just one 5.0. Uh, we haven't seen any significant movement up here to the north and a lot of times when we see movement wrap around this area and work its way up uh, towards the Andaman Sea uh, we normally see a little bit of pressure increase and in movement in the China region and areas here to the west right now that's not looking like it's not looking uh, like it's happening so things kind of holding up there temporarily 4.3 out around the uh, Sea of Crete the Atlantic looking pretty quiet. South Atlantic, of course, down here with the Antarctic uh, area and the uh, plate boundaries kind of meet down here. 
That's where that 5.9 kicked off. Let's go ahead and check out some movement into the states. Puerto Rico looking pretty quiet. You can see just a couple uh, small quakes down here. Uh, the United States movement up into Washington. Quite a bit of movement into the Yellowstone area. We'll go ahead and check that out in just a second. Um, looking at the Cascadia. Still seeing some deeper movement here at the surface. It seems like we always at least have one earthquake here within the Cascadia Megathrust Fold area where the uh, um, surface is kind of popping off a little bit. Either it's 1.9, 2.2, but it's always right around 28, 29 kilometers below surface. And it seems like daily uh, we're seeing at least one earthquake within this region. So still kind of watching the Cascadia pretty closely. Uh, I did have some movement around the Tehachapi area. Um, Tehachapi over here, seen a, I believe it was a three point, let's see what it was, 3.4. I thought it was a little bit bigger than that. I thought it was a 3.7. Maybe they downgraded it, but uh, that's kind of the largest, at least so far in this little uh, sequence of, of uh, aftershocks. We're going to call it aftershocks right now. Kind of sits off the fault of the, uh, I'm not for sure, San Joaquin Valley. Not for sure exactly which specific fault structure that is. Let's see if I can check that out in this map here as we head over to the, uh, where are we at? Okay, here we are. Got Bakersfield, Tehachapi, sits over there. Uh, what do we got here? Wheeler Ridge. So it looks like it may be sitting off on these fault systems right here. Uh, in the green zone, kind of within the orange or green Wheeler Ridge Fault. Latest well constrained fault zone. So it kind of looks like the Wheeler Ridge Fault. Uh, a little bit further south, of course, you run into the uh, sheer faults. Kind of, kind of similar to the. Uh, uh, Garlock fault structure, how it's kind of got that sheared uh, section, N not as intense. Let's see if I can show you guys on this map. This map's a little bit, little bit easier. Here's a Garlock fault runs over here. Uh, you can see it stretching over there towards Mojave, and uh, yeah, most of the fault structures nor normally, at least in California, Fornia, run the northwest to southeast. Man, is it smoky outside, folks? Is it smoky? I'm not even joking. Here, here where I'm at, it is really bad. We had a major wind switch, and it, it's pushing all the smoke from all the fires down into the valley. And man, it is bad. I'm going to post some pictures, maybe video a little bit later. Uh, kind of affected my throat. But um, these fault systems here are kind of different um, than the northwest to southeast areas. Kind of south, or kind of west to east type direction. Uh, but yeah, it looks like that 3.4 struck uh, just to the north of this area, but kind of kicking up some microquakes uh, in that region. So kind of watching that area pretty closely. Uh, the latest here is a 1.6 over by Mojave. And uh, San Andreas looks pretty quiet. The San Jacinto Fault area looks like your typical earthquake day. Antelope Valley, I know somebody mentioned about uh, the activity in Antelope Valley. Um, the swarms of activity is not uh, typical. Well, after following a, a pretty good sized earthquake here a few weeks ago now, right? I don't remember exactly how long it's been. Uh, let's see, seven, eight. So it's been almost almost a month ago when they had that 6.0. In uh, this type of setup, in this type of fault system here, these just just like down here in, uh, in the Ridgecrest area, years later, we're still having aftershocks, right? And they those were uh, a 6.9, 7.4. 7.4 I can't remember the exact magnitudes a couple years ago uh, July 4th July 5th but aftershocks like this can continue uh, if you look at it as a swarm which I don't um, these are all aftershocks just continuing from uh, continued buildup of pressure from a um, from those earthquake fractures a couple years ago same thing that's going on here folks this is you can call it a swarm you can call it what you want but the right now I see these as aftershocks from the 6.0 that struck almost a month ago in this area. And today, no joke, uh, things are continuing there and that may continue for months to come. Same with Nevada, right? This wasn't really a swarm. If you look back, uh, back at uh, all magnitudes over the last week or so, they're still having a swarm, or not a swarm, but aftershock sequence. 
Uh, I think it's been over a year and a half now since that six pointer struck out there. Six point two, I, I don't remember. It's been quite a while. But aftershocks can continue, no doubt, uh, for months and years uh, in the future. Especially on the West Coast. There's, you got a lot of buildup and pressure and strain. It's going to continue. Uh, let's see. Idaho Sawtooth Fault System getting in on uh, quite a bit of action. We've seen some of that activity yesterday as well. Uh, Yellowstone. Let's go ahead and check out them real quick. Zoom in to the area. Not at Yellowstone Lake, but kind of over here towards the Madison River area. Uh, just a handful of quakes looking at the, uh, I was looking at these earlier, <clears throat> seismograph overview of Yellowstone National Park. Looks like the, ma the majority of the earthquake activity over here around Maple Creek, I believe. This kind of looks like it. I believe, I believe that's it right here. Look at the time here. We're looking at probably between 1130 UTC and 1230. So we go over here and look at some of these uh, these time things, and it, it doesn't. 0933, none of these are matching up. These were uh, prior, it looks like much earlier on these time on these timetables there. So if that was the case, that would be these earthquakes right here, right there. Uh, but I do see some right there, unless unless there was a, the, another round of thunderstorms that boomed through here. But this kind of looks like localized earthquake activity, uh, unless it was really booming up there in Yellowstone National Park. I did see earlier this morning. I was looking at this uh, uh, the signature, some of these signatures on the south, where a line of thunderstorms once again came up here in the, earlier, way earlier this morning, uh, probably before sunrise. I uh, bring in a line of storms up there. Uh, and that kind of picks it up very dramatically. But uh, I believe that's uh, some of the earthquake activity around Maple Creek. Um, all other areas, this right here is interference, folks. I've seen a comment about it saying that this thing's going off the charts. Well, obviously, yes, it is going off the charts, but it's going off the charts due to technical errors and difficulties. Whatever's going on in the instrument reading uh, it could be human caused or it could be a malfunction in the system, but that is nowhere near um, legit activity in the central area of the caldera. No way. Otherwise, if this was going off like that, man, you would see this all over the seismograph stations throughout the park, and it's just not happening. Uh, some type of interference going on there uh, at Little West. Um, that is uh, an error. But uh, definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, what else we got here, folks, as far as earthquake activity? Tremor last night. I know I didn't get to do an update video. Kind of swamped. Uh, had 132 epicenters once again down into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone down there around 35, 40 kilometers or so. Uh, down dip downstream of the North American plate. That continues today, I'm sure. Uh, it has not updated yet. Normally we get updates around 6.30 p.m. West Coast time here. So we'll wait on that to see uh, when that updates. Uh, let's see, all other areas, Alaska still seeing some movement, uh, aftershock sequences following the eight point, uh, the eight pointer that struck a week ago now. Hawaii, just one little lone earthquake in the 2.5 department. You bring it up here and we, uh, we're bringing it down, I should say, around the all magnitudes. See quite a bit of movement around the Kilauea volcano, uh, right, uh, right around the surface area, but we're also looking at, uh, Let's see here, what do we got? But yeah, most of it's all shallow surface quaking. You see like a, like a line of activity stretching towards that movement. Still keep an eye on that. Also southeast area getting in on quite a bit of, uh, man, hiccups. Don't you love it? Uh, at the south end, southeast flank here around the uh, big island, still seeing some uh, activity there. Also a little oddball quake way over here around the, uh, Looks like Captain Cook, Hawaii, 9.6 kilometers for that 2.3. You don't see too much activity over here, although it does happen. It's uh, just not uh, just not all that common, at least within recent times. Here's the uh, earthquake, uh, at least 4.5 and above, looking around this area. Not a whole lot of movement around the Captain Cook area, uh, as far as 4.5 and above historically, uh, since records been kept look like uh, about 1900 or so. So, 
keep an eye on it. No doubt earthquakes can occur anywhere out here in the Pacific, right? Um, island chain, volcanic island chain, stretching all the way up to the Aleutian Islands. Maybe one day. No, I doubt it. I doubt if we'll be able to put an interstate through here and just drive Hawaii, the Hawaiian coastline, all the way up here from Alaska. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Um, look for a video a little bit later on in regards to the uh, smoke, man. It is horrible. I might go live and show you guys some of the activity in my backyard. It's just, it's horrendous. Nasty, nasty air today. It's uh, about 91 degrees. It's supposed to be 105, but I think with the uh, dimming of the sun today, we're not going to hit 105. But the uh, smoke kind of increasing, keeping... Uh, the surface cool, if you will, 90 something degrees, uh, but also trapping in some humidity uh, and making for a very nasty day here where I'm at in Northern California. So right around the Chico area, we're getting uh, we're getting it. We are getting it. We've been pretty fortunate enough with the smoke. We've had a south wind, but now wind's coming out of the north. And uh, man, I had to stock up on eye drops and uh, uh, some cough drops. <laughs> keep the, keep a, uh, man it's just it's bad all right folks have a good day stay safe we will be monitoring the earthquake live 3d stream throughout the day and uh, we will chat you guys a little bit later tonight uh, with an update video stay safe one everyone peace